Welcome back to the shop. I'm Jeff from Today's Craftsman, and we're going to be giving you a little look into our uh, finishing setup today. But before we get into that, I wanted to let you know that uh, John and I are actually going to shoot a podcast after this, or record rather. Um, so every week we put out a podcast, the American Craftsman podcast. comes out every Friday at 5 a.m. Eastern time. Um, so yeah, check that out. We'll have a link down below. But I want to take you back here to the finishing area. So... I think we've shown our spray booth before, but behind it recently, I just built this little um, little finishing area. So we needed some cabinets and stuff to hold all of our, our finishing supplies. We have our PPS cups, stir sticks. Uh, this is just where we keep the, the case to our gun and some extra parts. And we have a bunch of storage for different finishes, spare guns. These are not the guns we're gonna be talking about today. Um, and just some more finishing stuff down below. But what we're really gonna be talking about today is this Apollo HVLP turbine unit that we have and the gun. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll actually take it out of where we have it and bring it over to the bench and give you a closer look. We're here with the turbine portion of our spray system. This is an Apollo Precision 5 Pro. And we got this down at United Finishes. So we did a class called Spray Day at Nate um, with the guys at United Finishes. And this is what we were using. And we liked it so much that we ended up buying the demo unit. So this is a, the actual unit that we were spraying with there. Um, so we got it for a little bit of a discount, which is nice. Apollo is a um, US company. They're making these here in the United States. So that's, that's big for us. I think, yep, there you go. Made in USA. Um, and apparently they're actually the inventors of the turbine HVLP system. So, um, they must know what they're doing. They're still doing it. I don't know exactly how this works on the inside, like what the components are, but what this does is it creates clean air, um, for your spray gun. So it's a true HVLP, which stands for high velocity, low pressure. So basically this is creating clean air, um, which you may not get on a compressor. You know, you might get wet air or dirty air coming from a compressor. So we know that this air is clean. It's going through multiple filters here. One in the front, one in the back. And basically coming out of this port here is clean air through your hose. So this is, you know, a nice, uh, I think it's a 30 foot hose and then it goes to your gun. So um, it allows you to spray on site. You know, we couldn't lug our 80 gallon compressor to a job site to be able to spray. You need a lot of air to spray when you're spraying out of a conventional gun. Um, if we had to, we could take this, you know, it weighs, I don't know, 15 pounds. Could take this, the hose and the gun to a job site and touch something up. No special power requirements for the turbine, just a standard 110 plug. Uh, this is a five stage. That's why it's a precision five. They do have a, a precision six and these numbers refer to the number of stages. So stages um, in HVLP turbines are the number of fans that are actually attached to the motor. So this has five fans. Um, the more fans, just the more versatility you have, you can get higher pressure, higher volume, um, you know, and that's all controlled here by this knob and we'll get into this more once the machine is plugged in but this is how you control how many pounds of pressure the unit's putting out here's the gun and you can see it's in pieces i had taken this apart to clean it after the last time i sprayed with it but i'll put it together real quick and we can show you how it works Here's the gun all assembled. And I will note that this is the cup that comes with the gun and that would thread directly into the gun up here. Um, however, we don't use this because you have to clean this after every time you use it because it's just a metal cup. We're using uh, the 3M PPS system, which we've shown before. So we're able to just um, attach a disposable cup to the top of this and makes for easy cleanup. So for the video so that you can see what's going on, we're going to be spraying some um, gray paint. This is called gray mist. 
And we'll be mixing this with just a drill and a regular paddle mixer. But I'll show you how we, how we like to actually mix our paint here. So we have some clears and other uh, colors for jobs over there, but we use these mixing lids. So inside of here is a big paddle. And you know, when this turns, it actually mixes the paint. And we just have a little attachment here on a drill with an old drill bit. And it allows us to struggle to get this on. And then <laughs> what's going on here? There we go. So we can mix our paint and then it's really easy to just pour. It's kind of like the old syrup uh, container at the diner. So what these are, are nice. For? Uh, these are sort of like knockoffs. I think these are about 30 bucks for two of them. The real ones are about $30 a piece, but we've had pretty good luck with these. You can see only one out of the four is broken. So <laughs> not too bad, but definitely handy. Keeps everything uh, definitely mess free. Cause you'll see when we mix this, we're going to have a, a paint covered mixer. So can pop our can open. You can see that's not gray. I think the importance of mixing paint is, is understated a lot of times. Um, you really need to mix your paint and mix it well. And we mix on low speed water-based paint will get a lot of bubbles in it. I like to mix for about two minutes. Our paint is all mixed. This is how we load it into a cup so that we can attach to the gun. So I like to use these little uh, pouring attachments. They keep the edge of the can clean. And we have our strainer stand here. So we strain all of our paint. I have a 125 micron filter, which is what you use for water-based paint. These are our disposable PPS cups, so you see we have a 14 ounce cup here and a 28 ounce cup here. Um, the 28 ounce can be a bit big and heavy. So I, I try not to use those unless I'm spraying a lot. And then we have our outer cup here. So our bladder goes inside the outer cup and uh, we have a lid here that we'll use later. These lids do come with a filter, um, but I find it's easier and I get better flow of the paint if I strain the paint and actually remove this filter from the lid. So, so we can put our, our cup under the filter here and just strain the paint into the cup. So we don't have to fill it all the way. We're just gonna spray some test pieces here. You can see the viscosity is uh, definitely thinner than like a latex paint. This is a polyurethane. This is the Enduro uh, Pro Series white polyurethane. Is that what you've been using for all your cabinets? Yeah, so we've been using this finish for, I want to say six or eight months, maybe a little bit more. Um, it's great. We haven't had any issues with it. Only issues we had are, are user error. Um, Super durable, goes on really easy. You'll see how, how nice this lays out. So I keep a, a little dump, dump cup here because once you get to the very end of the strainer, it, it runs out really slow and, and it's catching all those particles. So we have our, our cup here. We take the lid and press it on. We wanna make sure that, that they're attached by, by lifting it up like that. And then we have this outer lid so that seals that bladder and lid together everything in the pps is like a quarter turn so you you put it on here quarter turn now we're attached you can see we have this this hose so that goes here and what this does is this is feeding a little bit of air 
and it's it's filling this outer cup and it's gonna squeeze that bladder and it's really gonna help push the paint out. Gun is all loaded with paint. All we have to do now is set our turbine. So I'll show you what setting we're gonna be using and how we get to that. <laughs> so we have our power switch here and we have this nice digital display. So it's gonna read some information out first, the hours and the software version. So you see we have 31.8 hours on the turbine. And this is the knob that controls the pressure. So I'm gonna run this probably at about four PSI. And there are some recommended settings, but it's really trial and error. It depends on the temperature, the thickness of your material, and the you know settings and tip on your gun. So we'll turn this until we get. Four PSI. Our turbine is on and we have our pressure set. Now we need to uh, tune the, the fan of our gun. And I'll do that on this rosin paper here. I have a roll that I can just, you know, pull a new piece up. So we'll turn on the booth. It's gonna get a little loud, tune the gun, and we can show you how it sprays on this piece here. had this piece drying now for uh, I think about 90 minutes. It's nice and dry. From here we would scuff this with 320 and we would do a second coat and then we'd repeat that for three coats total. Um, you know your first coat's never going to come out perfect so you like to build up coats. We really like this Apollo turbine. You know it's it's compact, delivers that nice clean air and and it really keeps a steady pressure and it's quiet which is a, another Big plus for us. We love being able to use the PPS cups. Makes cleaning up really fast. So yeah, I think uh, if you have a small shop, turbine setup is a, a really good option. And Apollo, uh, we've really liked it. Made in the USA, which is great. So yeah, if you have any questions about Apollo turbines or anything else, leave it down in the comments. We'll see you on the next one. Do you want to just talk a little bit about the, the whole problem that you're having because the spray booth wasn't grounded? Just yeah. Kind of interesting. Yeah, so um, we were having some issues with spraying and we were getting a lot of bubbles on the surface and I could actually see, you know, when I was spraying, um, you know, you, you watch your fan and I could see a lot of turbulence in, in the pattern, you know, between the gun and the workpiece. 
and it wasn't coming from the actual spray booth itself. Um, so after doing a, a lot of research myself and, and asking around, I actually got with Dan at United Finishes and he said that, you know, it could be static electricity. So he suggested that I take the uh, turbine and take it outside and try that and see if I was getting the same, same result. Uh, it was raining, much like it's raining right now. So I wasn't able to do that, so I brought it to the other side of the shop and I actually set up on the forks of the forklift and I sprayed over there and I didn't have the issue. So that led us to believe that it was a static issue. Um, I found some bad grounding in the motor of our axial fan and uh, fixed that and it improved it a little bit, but what I ended up doing is actually sinking an eight foot ground rod right next to the booth and maybe we'll get some b-roll of that and actually grounding this metal booth itself so this is is metal um, and you can generate static electricity so although everything is grounded back to the panel i thought for you know the the 50 bucks and the little bit of time putting a ground rod and grounding this booth directly was a good idea so it it fixed the problem thankfully it was it was a rough couple of weeks trying to figure that out